Good morning, friends. Welcome to Walking Through His Word with Darina. I am so glad that you are with me here today on this July 30th, the last Friday of July. I'm sorry, June. (laughs) We're in June. I'm so ready for July. Um, This last Friday of June. And I am actually... um, doing my last broadcast here before I take a little bit of a sabbatical. So I just wanted to say good morning to you all. I see some people popping up live here on Instagram. I see Laverda and Brett and my friend Julie, Malia, Mama T. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for being faithful. So many of you who come every Friday. It's just been a joy to be able to do this broadcast Um, I've been doing it since 2020 when the world shut down and it is a time where we come together and as the title says, we walk through God's word and we have been walking through the Psalms specifically. Um, We're actually going to be looking at Psalm 131 today if you want to get out your Bibles and follow along or you can feel free to just listen in. Um, as I'm going to be walking through that psalm in just a moment here. But I just want to say how grateful I am for this space. Um, I remember when I felt the murmurings in my spirit to do this live broadcast. And to be honest, I was terrified of live video at that time because I had never really done it before. Um, I felt nervous that I was going to just put myself out there and not be polished. And of course, I prepare, but... There's lots of variables when you're doing a live video and sometimes the technology doesn't work and all of that. But I've discovered over these last few years of doing this broadcast, just what a joy, what a privilege and what a special connection there is when we get to be here live in community, even though we are living and moving in so many different spaces around the country and around the world, um, because we have friends who are joining from other countries too. And so I am deeply grateful for a technology that allows us to do that, and especially for those of you who have shown up consistently. And maybe you've missed a week here or there, that's okay. Um, I love just hearing the feedback, the direct messages, um, even the comments that you are sharing live as we are going through these Psalms. And I am a Bible teacher at heart, and so to know that you are opening God's Word That is my heartbeat and that just brings me so much joy because I know that more than a teacher can give you, God's word is what brings us peace that passes understanding and awareness of God and who he is and even um, can help to nudge us in the direction that he has for our lives. And so that's why we're doing this. And I wanna just ask you, if you are joining me live today, to share, how did you find this broadcast and what city you're in? How'd you find this? Um, some of you, I know your stories and others of you I see are um, new in joining us or maybe have just started joining us recently. Um, I'm going to be going through Psalm 131 today and I'm excited for this because it is our last psalm before I'm taking July off as a sabbatical. I've never done that before, um, but I think it's really important for myself, for my soul. And when I started looking at Psalm 131 this week, I was not surprised. I was not surprised that this was the psalm that landed on this particular day when I was going to be going out into sabbatical and embracing rest. And this has happened over and over again over the last two years that whenever I would pick up the psalm that was for that week, I wasn't, you know, just been going in order. We've been walking through the psalms together. And as I've been doing that, just recognizing how God would use that specific psalm to speak to me personally, to speak to some of you personally, and even to just encourage my heart that this was the word for this very week because of things that were going on in the world or our community or even in my heart. And so I just, I love how the Lord is so personal in that. And that's one of the reasons why we need to continue to be in his word because he has specific messages for us and his presence 
is what abounds from his word. And so I see a few of you here on Instagram who are participating live right now, who are sharing a little bit about how they found the broadcast um, just for fun. I, I wanted to see who was here today. And so my friend Malia, um, Corgi Mom 2 from Minnesota, and we were at, um, I, we went to a conference together, actually the Azer Leadership Conference. And so I think um, she found it through that and connection with me through that. Um, she said she's in Wisconsin right now at a coffee shop. And so I love that she's still joining us, even though she's not at home and enjoying this time this summer. Mama T Savage um, is her Instagram handle. And I know Mama T has been here through the weeks, through the months. And she says, I found you at the beginning of COVID and I've followed you since. And it's such a joy, Mama T, for me to see your name pop up and be encouraged that oh, she's here, she's present, she's in my circle as we're going through this psalm. Um, I see another friend, Joshua Snively, here on Instagram. And he says he doesn't remember how he found this, but he was so glad that he did um, in the most important time in his life that he needed it. And God was and is so good. And recently realized that Joshua and I have a mutual friend that, that he was with some friends of mine. And, you know, even though we don't live right in the same community, um, he lives not too far away from me in central California. And I just, I love those connections. Um, I see my friend Maria is here, who's a dear friend of mine through the school that my kids attend. And I see Cora Chan, who is a woman who I met through the Someday Is Here event, which was a conference for Asian American Christian women um, that happened actually right before the world shut down. It was a privilege that we all got to be together and um, no details yet, but we have another event that's going to be coming up pretty soon. So I'm excited about that. Cora, we'll have to check in about that. Um, so I'm so glad that you all have been with me during this time, and I know others are logging in as well. I want to go ahead and dive into Psalm 131, but I just wanted to pause and take this moment to just acknowledge what God can do, even through something as crazy as a little live broadcast, <laughs> reading through the Psalms. I am not a polished preacher when I come to this space. I am here to, as a friend, guide you and what it looks like to read through God's word together and to really model, you know, I can do this myself. I can read the Bible and I can dissect it. I can pull it apart. I can learn about God. And no matter what, there is always a golden nugget for me that God has when I am reading the scriptures. I want that to be your sentiment. I want you to go in with a sense of, of both respect, a fear of God, but also a sense of confidence that this book is for you to read and that you can read it on your own. So friends, um, we're going to be reading Psalm 131. This is a group, part of a group of Psalms that we've been going through called the Psalms of Ascent or the Songs of Ascent. These were actually sung on pilgrimage. It meant that those Jews who were going on a pilgrimage, returning to Jerusalem to worship, which they would do a couple of times a year, they would actually sing these songs. And they would sing these songs as a reminder to themselves of who God is, of what God has done in their lives. And we don't always have the authors of these songs, but for this specific one that we're reading today, Psalm 131, we see that it is a song by David. Now, David is a familiar writer for the Psalms. He hasn't written all the Psalms, uh, but he's written a majority of them, actually. And I love the Psalms of David because I feel like we get to read his prayer journal. We get to hear him as a worship leader. And we get to hear this very personal pouring out that David does through this poetry, through the Psalms. And so I love that we get to kind of land on this one before we take a break in the month of July. Um, the other thing I'll say about this one, because it's a very short Psalm, only three verses, but we can sense that David has a confidence in the Lord. And I want you to pay attention to the tone and the descriptions that emerge here in this song of David as I read it aloud. So I'm gonna start by reading it in the ESV translation, which is where I love to start more of a word for word translation. And then we're gonna go ahead and unpack it together, my friends. 
It says, O oh Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. But I have calmed and quieted my soul. Like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. O oh Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. So three short verses that we're reading here in Psalm 131, friends. And I started out in the ESV translation. I'm going to reference a couple of other translations today as well. But I want us to go ahead and walk through this psalm and together to think about what is David saying here? What is he trying to to impress upon the hearts of the readers and specifically those who would be singing this as they ascend. So the reason why these are called the Psalms of Ascent, we've talked about this before, is that Jerusalem was on a hill. And so they were often walking uphill or ascending um, as they were walking around the city or walking to the city. And so we, we see this kind of progression that even happens in a lot of the Psalms and feeling like they're walking uphill. And here we see such an interesting and kind of different format, even for David, because what he is describing is a calmed and quieted soul. And I love that even the subhead here in my ESV translation says, says, I have calmed and quieted my soul. Maybe David has been through trials or he is walking through something that is really difficult where he knows that he needs to calm and quiet his soul. If you have ever been in that situation, or perhaps if you are in that situation right now, would you drop an emoji for me to just let me know? Yes, I know what that feels like when I am so worked up, when there's so much anxiety within me um, that I need to stop and pause and calm my soul to quiet my heartbeat. This is the encouragement that we see in Psalm 131. And it's interesting because David is describing for us what that feels like for him. He says, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. Now, you know, that's an interesting thing to say because in other Psalms, we, we see this kind of lifting and this exaltation of God and sinking into God's character and how that lifts the spirit. He's saying something different here. He says, I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. And so what I see here in David is that he is humbling himself and he is encouraging, subsequently encouraging all of us who are readers and singers along with him to humble ourselves, that we are not lifting up ourselves. We're not lifting up our eyes to things that are too big for us, that we are not occupying ourselves with things that are too great. We are saying no to pride and we are pivoting back towards humility. And so even in David's posture, we see this. Now I'm going to read here in the, in Psalm 131, in the message translation by Eugene Peterson, which is more of what we call a paraphrase of the scriptures, but I love it because it's so vivid. And Eugene writes this. He says in verse one, God, I'm not trying to rule the roost. I don't want to be king of the mountain. I haven't meddled where I have no business or fantasized grandiose plans. And so that's verse one. And through that description, we see really a deeper understanding of this sentiment that David has that the reason why he is not lifting up his eyes, that he's not occupying himself with things that are too great is because he doesn't want to be king of the mountain. He doesn't want to rule the roost. He he doesn't want to be meddling in things that are too big for himself to handle. He doesn't want to get caught up in that pride. And if we think about the context of David, he was this shepherd boy, the younger of the boys in his family who was plucked out. And he was 
chosen to be a king and elevated to the status of king. And then as a king, he walked through so many trials. And we've talked about some of those in the past that even his own son pursued his life and wanted to kill him. That King Saul was jealous of him and wanted to kill him as well. And so there's so much hardship and trials that David walked through. And so it's interesting here that he's just saying, I don't want to be king of the mountain. I don't want to be lifted up. And he's putting himself in that posture. And then in verse two here in the message, it says, I've kept my feet on the ground. I've cultivated a quiet heart, like a baby content in its mother's arms. My soul is a baby content. And it's beautiful here because we have this imagery of a baby who is weaned. In the ESV, it says, a weaned child, so a child that no longer needs to have the milk from its mother's breast, but is peaceful, laying in the arms of his mother or her mother, this weaned child. And so we're not talking about a time when a baby is crying and screaming at the top of their lungs. We're talking about a baby who is calm, and we can just imagine them kind of nestled in that crick of the arm where mother is holding them. And this is the imagery that David gives us of himself calmed and quieted in the arms of God, like a mother, that motherly imagery that we have here, that he is content in its mother's arms, as Eugene Peterson writes in the message, the contentment is the sentiment and the tone that we see here in Psalm 131. Content to be in God's presence. And as Joshua is writing here on Instagram Live, in God's compassion. He's dwelling there in God's compassion. And so here in just two verses, we see a beautiful invitation from David and ultimately from God to calm and quiet our souls, to calm and quiet our souls. And then what happens in, in verse, the in between verses two and three, there's a space here in, the, in my ESV translation, a little pause perhaps. And it says in verse three, O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. And so we see a change in the way that this psalm is being written. It's speaking now from first person to to a first person directive, telling Israel to find their hope in the Lord, addressing those who would be reading or singing this psalm, addressing us today to hope in the Lord, to find our hope and our rest in the Lord. In the message, it says, wait Israel for God, wait with hope, hope now, hope always. I love that. And so here again, just reminding ourselves, what can we learn about God from this psalm? While I am learning through the imagery of David that God is like a mother who holds us, that we can be peaceful and contented in his arms, even when the world is swirling around us, even when our personal lives are a hot mess, even when our finances are upside down, even when we are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, we can rest in God's presence like a weaned child in his mother's arms. And I'm also centering on that word hope, that we can hope in the Lord So we are waiting with hope. And if you don't feel that peace, that presence, that we can rest in him, we can rest in hoping, in looking to the future, in hoping now and hoping for the future, hoping always, as it says here in the message version. Isn't this a powerful psalm? I love how sometimes even the shortest of psalms packs such a punch. And this one I find especially appropriate for me and just speaking to my soul as I'm preparing my heart for a sabbatical. Now, some of you may have heard of sabbatical. Maybe you've gone on sabbatical yourself. And some of you are like, well, what in the world is a sabbatical? And wow, that sounds like a privilege that you get to take a break. And yes, it is true. It is taking a break. It is taking a rest. Um, 
I don't know how to do it exactly, but I have some things in mind, some things that I'm planning. And I wanted to just spend a minute here just articulating that to you because I think it is important for you to understand why I'm going on this journey. It's not just to go on vacation. It's actually to rest my soul, to rest my mind and to lean in more to listening to God. And as I've been journaling this week and this final week of work that I've had in preparing my heart for sabbatical, some of the things that have been bubbling to the surface is recognizing that it is good, at least for me, once a year, perhaps this will be an annual thing. I also do this once a week when I take a Sabbath to quiet my heart, to not be out in the public And even as David is saying here in Psalm 131 to not be ruling the roost, not be meddling in things that are bigger than me, to to stoop lower, to listen, to settle into rhythms where I am not trying to strive, I am not trying to check off the boxes where my mind is not constantly swirling with what am I going to do next? What I'm going to post next? Where do I need to bring my kids? Um, how, you know, what's my next project? All of those kinds of things that can rule my mind, especially because I am a solopreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. I am a writer. I'm author and speaker. I don't have necessarily a boss. I am my own boss. I do have people who care about me and pray over me and and people like my husband who are part of my team in the ways that they guide and give me feedback. Um, But I know that I can get caught up into the frenzy and distracted from what God has for me. And so that's why I'm taking this extended time, four weeks, where I'm not going to be on social media as much. I have some things that are scheduled to serve you, but I'm taking social media off of my phone. So I'll just be able to check in only on my laptop at certain times. And I just want to free myself from that pattern of always scrolling, of always picking up my phone, of always checking messages, even feeling like I have to answer messages within a couple of minutes. And I don't mind doing that. I feel like it's a privilege, but I also know that sometimes I need to rest from that pace and from that rhythm. I also want to press in to do some things that cultivate creativity, things that I don't have time for as much during the school year when I'm coaching and when my kids are in school. Some of those things include cooking. I love cooking. I love cooking meals that take time, not just the quick, you know, bust something out in 15 minutes through the Instapot, which is sometimes my um, my rhythm when we've got to get off to soccer practice or a track meet but to just enjoy that time creating in the kitchen and especially love doing that with my kids. I'm also planning time to be out in nature. So I'm gonna be taking more walks, um, running on trails, and even going camping with my daughter, my oldest daughter. We're gonna do a camping and hiking trip together. And so I'm very excited about that time because I know that when I'm in creation, I'm reminded of our creator God. And I'm also reminded of how small I am, that I'm not in control of all the things, that my to-do list is not in control of me. And so when I am out in nature, um, there is an exhale that happens in me. In fact, I was just reading this morning some science around that, kind of some brain science around that. And just want to share this with you, even as an encouragement to you all, wherever you are, even if you can't take a month's sabbatical, just take an hour or 30 minutes to get out into God's creation. And it's been shown that nature provides a a regulating sensory environment where the nervous system is most likely to relax. So rest is actually not possible until our nervous system relaxes. And I learned that this morning from my friend Tara Nurgard, um, her email, she is putting on a retreat, a soul care retreat. So she was talking about how intentional she was to choose this retreat location so that people could spend some time outside. So I'm taking a little bit of extended time to share that with you today. Also because I am asking you to pray for me during this time. And I am going to be leaning in to pray as well. Praying over future projects. Um, I actually also have a job offer on the table. And so I'm thinking about this uh, part-time job that I may step into. I'm not 
100% sure yet, but I'm about 90% there that it's a new thing I'm going to be stepping into. I'm excited about this opportunity, but I also am going to have to shift my rhythm. And so as I'm in sabbatical and being a little bit quieter, just praying and asking God, how do you want me to shift my rhythm? What things do you want me to take off my plate? It is difficult for us to hear God if we don't make space to listen to him. That's right. We've got to make space to listen to him. And I actually wanted to share something with you before we move into this time of prayer. I've been reading this book called The Listening Life. And you know how I love to share resources. So The Listening Life by Adam McHugh. Actually, a friend gave this to me when I was on a retreat earlier this year. And it's about embracing attentiveness in a world of distraction. It's been a book that I've been going through slowly, but I love just the the thesis and actually just the deeper invitation that Adam McHugh presents for us in this book about listening to God and just how important it is for us to have listening prayers, not prayers that we are just pouring out and telling God all the things, but in a posture where we are listening And I want to share a quote with you that um, just was inspiring to me. It says, God's voice enters as a thought or an impression on their consciousness, and they respond to it, yet do not ascribe the inner voice to its proper source. As incredible as that sounds, as I reflect on the voices I have listened to in times of critical decision, I think I agree with Dallas Willard. There have been many occasions in which I wrestled and listed the pros and cons and sought counsel and yet attained no clarity whatsoever until a moment in which I suddenly knew what to do. We may not hear from God because our lives are too loud. Well, friends, this is why I'm taking some time to quiet. Um, And I have three girls at home. They're home for the summer. And so when I say quiet, I know that it doesn't mean my house is going to be completely silent or I'm going to have hours and hours on end with no interruptions. I know that's not true for my season of life. You may be in that season or you may not be in that season. You may even have younger kids or other commitments. And so that's why it's difficult um, to find that silence. But One of the things I want to encourage you with is that even you could set a timer on your phone for five minutes to sit in your chair, your favorite chair, or that little corner on the couch, and to just be quiet for five minutes. That itself is revolutionary, my friends. And so I want to be doing more of that, waiting for God, waiting with hope, listening to what he has for me. And I want to encourage you to do that a little bit this summer as well. We're going to go ahead and move into a time of prayer now. And if you want to follow along in your Bibles, we've been reading in Psalm 131. And so I'm going to be just praying out of Psalm 131 today. And as always, I encourage you, share in the comments. What made an impression on you from today's discussion? And as we are walking through Psalm 131, is there something that you want to put before you for this summer, for July, as you are in prayer? Is there a word or a character quality of God that emerges from this text that you want to center on, that you want to remember? Feel free to type those in the chat. We're going to pray over those right now. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you that you have brought us through another month. We thank you, God, that you meet us in the words of Scripture. And as we're walking through your word today in Psalm 131, I pray the words of David. Oh, Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. God, I'm not trying to rule the roost. I don't want to be the king of the mountain. I haven't meddled where I have no business or fantasized grandiose plans. God, we pray that we could put our feet on the ground. We pray that you would calm and quiet our souls today. I pray that we would be like those, that weaned child nestled in her mother's arms, that our souls would be quiet and at peace with you, peace in your presence, even when chaos is swirling around us, God. And I don't pretend to know what all of those things are, but God, as Brett is saying here in the comments, hope from you is essential as the air we breathe. And so we inhale that hope, that sense 
of peace that passes understanding. God, we lift up this time. We lift up each person who is listening live or even as a recording, that your presence would be with them, that you would come and quiet their souls in whatever decisions they are facing within their business, within their family, maybe a job opportunity like I'm facing, or maybe it's some other heartache that is weighing us down. God, would you be the source of our calm and our quiet and our hope? And I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you, friends, for being with me today. Oh, Rachel, I see your comments. Thank you so much for your prayers over this time for me of sabbatical. And I'm praying for each of you in the quiet as I'm hiking and as I'm cooking. I'm also going to be thinking of all of you and what God might be speaking to you this summer. And I pray that you would even find that five minutes a day. Just set that timer. Sit down in your chair for five minutes. Get off your phone. Turn off whatever is on in your house. Maybe it's music or maybe it's the TV or something else that you use as white noise and challenge yourself to be in the quiet, friends. Um, I wanna encourage you to do that. So a couple of things. This is the resource I shared today, The Listening Life by Adam McHugh. If you wanna check out some more of what I read, I also wanna show this um, amazing planner. It's called the Something New Planner, and this is put out by Encourage by Dayspring that I actually write for. Um, I'm giving away a copy of this planner in my newsletter. So if you hop over to DorenaGilmore.com, you can sign up if you're already part of my Glory Graham tribe. It's free. I send out a weekly newsletter um, just helping you to see God's glory in your everyday life, and you will still be receiving those on my sabbatical because I'm scheduling those ahead of time. This planner is so fun because it actually includes devotionals. And so here's the one that I wrote, it has my name and a little QR code. So there's some encouragement here about mercy. It's called Show Mercy. But then you can use that QR code and read the entire devotional. There's some other ones that are by my other encouraged sisters. Here's one by my friend, Dr. Lucretia Beery. Uh, Barry, who is the director of Brownicity. Some of you know that I've partnered with her before. So anyway, this is a planner. It's an 18-month planner, and so it starts in July, and it goes through 2024. And I would love to give one of you a copy of this. So you can enter to win through my newsletter. If you sign up for that, hop over there, and I would love to be able to give you. It's a paper planner. I know, Laverta, I'm a planner junkie too. I do use my phone to share my things with my family, but I love my paper planner. It just helps me to remember things and to highlight them in different colors and to have all of those deadlines in front of me. So you can win a copy of that, or you can hop over to Amazon or dayspring.com and get a copy of something new, our new planner that we just put out. Love that. And friends, I just want to encourage you as we go out today that we were made to rest. And I know it is so hard for many of us to embrace that, but it says throughout the scripture that we were made for rest, that that is the gift that God gives us. And I want rest to be our superpower. And so that's why I am saying I am not a superhuman. I need to take this time off in July and I will be back here in August. I welcome um, any private messages that you want to share with me, any prayer requests that you have. And I also want to encourage you, if you're looking for teaching over the summer, hop over to my YouTube channel. You can find teachings that I have done there, some of the walking through his word maybe that you've missed in the past. I also have my Create in Me a Heart of Mercy Bible study that just came out, and there's new teachings coming out every week on that. So if you want to learn more about God's mercy, there's free teachings on YouTube, and you can also buy the workbook for that as well. So lots of resources for you, my friends. You are loved. I will see you in August. God be with you.